Greetings, everyone. Greetings. How do rich people think? Remember, in this book, we have the world class, which are the wealthy, the financially endowed, and we have the middle class, which are looked at as the folks who have a, let's say, trying relationship with money, or they struggle to make uh, money, or they see leveraging their time as the only way to make money. And maybe they're trapped in a financial cycle of thinking that does not empower them. They don't have to necessarily be broken poor, but the mindset is what this book is about. Remember, it is not about money and budgeting and all of that. It is all about mindset. So since we are on our 11 day financial fitness challenge i wanted to make sure that i got this in and so we're only going to do two chapters today i love the two lessons for today lesson 10 and 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 actually sorry lesson yeah lesson 10 and the quote pessimism leads to weakness optimism to power i want to go over this this is very much in line with our limiting beliefs survey from yesterday in the challenge for day three, whereby our limiting beliefs and the way we see money directly impacts our money energetic signature, our financial frequency. Middle class believes money is negative. World class, what do y'all think? Believes money is positive. Ask most people about money and you'll understand why they don't have any. The masses see ambitious people as greedy and self-serving. That is true. We have this quality, y'all. Think about it. When we see people, if too many people see me talking about money, 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 and I'm talking about streams of income and all this, they're going to look at me and they're going to say, she's so materialistic. I am one of the farthest people from materialism ever. That's why I was broke for so long. Okay. Seriously, listen to this. They will talk about you and they will say, oh, this is so materialistic. Yet, I don't have a fancy car. I don't spend money on car notes. None of that. Okay? But that's what people will say about you. But let them see you out there, you know, working out hard, building muscle, trying to win that football or basketball game, practicing long hours um, to be that top tennis expert or going to school for all them years to get that MBA or that PhD. And they will say, wow, what wonderful qualities. Think about it. So we've got to get at what is this, 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 this yuckiness and this rotten feeling that we have about people who want to talk about money, people who want to earn more money and people who want to manifest financial abundance what is wrong with that we want to manifest health we want to manifest good relationships right so we've got to look at financial stability and financial health and financial prowess if you want to call it as another form of abundance spiritual abundance so anyway enough of that after all we'll get this they see money the masses see ambitious people as greedy and self-serving. They see money as a necessary evil that must be managed, but never focused on. So we just manage money. We don't focus on it. God forbid we focus on money, then we become, ooh, he's materialistic. All he's concerned about is money. Stingy. Miser. After all, there are more righteous pursuits like television, sports, and movies. That's a little stab and some sarcasm, but how far is it from the truth? The idea of building wealth seems shallow. It also seems like a lot of work. The rich see money as a positive tool with the power to create freedom and opportunity for themselves and their families. It gives them opportunities. It gives them freedom. It gives them an opportunity to show up big in the world, to be more of yourself. I said this before. If you are a stingy jerk, when you get money, you're going to be a stingy jerk. If you're a giving philanthropist that cares about his or her neighbor, you're going to be able to do more of that when you get more money. This is another quote before we end the chapter. So while the middle class demonizes and criticizes the world class for selfishness and greed, the latter is donating a lion's share of money that keeps charities alive. Many also pay more in taxes a year than most people pay in a lifetime and are essentially responsible for funding the infrastructure of the government's tax base. Now, you know, that's a bit of a conservative Republican economics type of view. So I looked at that. You know, they do have a tendency to misrepresent statistics. And I wondered if that fact or that statement, which was stated as fact, 
speaks to, well, clearly we know that if someone is making a few million, they're probably likely as an individual paying more taxes than someone like me, okay? However, we have to ask ourselves as a class of people, let's say most small businesses are owned by people who function in a middle income class bracket or not quite wealthy, not quite high income, but let's say they're somewhere in there. Clearly, we know that small business owners uh, put more into this economy. They hire more employees, blah, 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 blah. So on a one-to-one -one level, this may be true, but as a group, as a group, is this really true? Do they, don't they, we know they get more tax breaks because we know Mr. Charlie is sure coming after most of us unless you're above a certain uh, number of millions of dollars, Mr. Charlie is coming after you, okay? So that one I just wondered, as an individual, individual or as a collective. Okay, the quote for chapter 11, a man with a surplus can control circumstances, but a man without surplus is controlled by them, and often he has no opportunity to exercise judgment. When we are struggling financially, we don't have an opportunity to exercise judgment because we are in survival mode. We are trying to put food on the table and keep a roof over our head. So how in the world can a person who's struggling like that exercise any judgment? Okay, so you are out of control. Your life is out of control if you don't have a surplus, if you don't have some putback, if you don't have some reserves, or if you are not fi at least financially stable where you have an emergency fund and you can put some money aside for savings and have some cash on hand. Middle class embraces advanced degrees. I love this, y'all, because y'all know this is true. World class embraces any form of education that makes them wealthier. Okay, this I agree with 100%. Coming from me, I have a master's degree in education. Did my master's degree get me where I am today? No. Was it my master's degree that allowed me to open up a school and run it successfully, making good money for over 15 years? No, it was not that. Does my master's degree allow me to do any of what I'm doing today? No. Now, he's talking about leveraging workshops, personal development, reading self-help books, blah, 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 blah. That has helped me. Definitely. But you know what else? Because I have invested in myself. I have I have invested in myself with coaching, with with uh, business development, with 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 mentors. I have invested in myself. But at, at, when, when it comes down to success, you know what? And I made sure I wrote this down. What has been more um, helpful to me is my self-study, my desire and ambition to want something in life, my faith. That's it, my self-study, my ambition, and my faith that I can do it. That has been the most tremendous building block to me, and it will be to you also, because if you have that, you will go out and get the necessary coursework and self-support that you need to up-level your life. Bam, that's what I got to say, okay? Sometimes it takes more education, and that's when the world-class thinkers turn to any form of education that will give them knowledge to get what they need to get or what they want. But more often they turn to people who have done what they want to do. This is why personal and professional development seminars have become so popular over the years. So middle class and people that have a, a, a struggling, resistant type of relationship with money, the first thing they want to go do is go get an advanced degree. An advanced degree is going to do what, y'all? Get you a job. It's going, to let, it's going to allow you to use your hours and your time and your body in order to, I know that's a business call, I'm going to have to call back later. It's going to allow you to do that. It's going to pigeonhole you to work for someone else in most cases, although not all cases. But the vast majority of people are still limited on top of being in debt. So this is about the nuts and bolts of success and going out and getting what you need to learn what you need to learn so that you can make smarter decisions so you can develop a prosperity mindset as it relates to money or a mindset that allows you to leverage more than just your time to increase your income. I love this chapter. Speakers, authors, and trainers who lead these programs have usually achieved massive success in their chosen field and have come back to share their secrets with others who wish to do the same thing. Y'all, why or how Rich people think it's not about the coins. It is about 
the mindset. What do rich people do, y'all? Rich people solve solutions. What do pe rich people do, y'all? Rich people embrace money. They don't run from it. What do rich people do? Rich people are optimistic. They continue to try in the midst of failure. What else do rich people do? Rich people don't run out and get advanced degrees. Poor people run out and get advanced degrees. And you, that has never been seen more than it has been today with new money and with the internet economy. Okay. Much love to y'all. Much love to y'all. Day three of our financial fitness challenge on patreon.com slash Tunisia Ali. Love you guys. I'll see you on the other side of those coins for day four.